in science, one slide equals five minutes, so I'm staying to script. Get it. <laughs> so hello, my name is Kate Gillespie. I'm a doctoral student in biotechnology. I'm here to chat with you about the harbor. That's the title and purpose of my talk, to get you to look and to tell you about a unique building downtown. This is where I study. It's called the Institute of Marine Environmental Technology, formerly known as the Center of Marine, of Marine Biotechnology. Either way, it is not the aquarium. <laughs> Though there is an aquaculture center in the basement, it does have marine life, but is for the study of science. Here's my 30-second commercial about science using the Baltimore Harbor. Took the lovely tar-like sediment, added nutrients, nasty chemical mix, stimulate bacterial growth. Months later, test the activity, the chemicals have been degraded. So extracted DNA, isolated a PCB dechlorinated gene. Now, PCBs are bio, bio oh, excuse me, polychlorinated biphenyls, le legacy industrial contaminants. They're called persistent organic pollutants because they stick tight to sediments, bioaccumulate up trophic levels, stay in fat, cause toxic effect, potential carcinogens. But I'm really here to talk about my appreciation for the water. I'm from New Jersey, the real Jersey Shore. Love the water. I grew up next to it, visit often as I can. Here's my harbor, which is full of boats and cute gulls. Spent my fish, uh, childhood fishing, crabbing, looking at the ocean. But now I'm here in Baltimore, and I'm working right next to the inner harbor. So I work, walk by it every day, so I'm going to look in it. Most mornings, in, most firstly in the mornings and in the evenings, I linger to see what's going on. But this is my favorite spot, right behind the power station. So typically, what do I see? Oily reflective water, bits of floating gypsum, other floaters, cups, bottled fags, you name it, you know it. There are days when you see slurries of stuff, litter, leaf liver, plastics, branches. But if you're looking regularly, start to notice things. I want to share with you what I found out. First, the water is often dark and murky. Second, earlier this summer, I saw a whole crowd of crabs swimming around through the murky water. Last, after a long, hot day, you might see some bubbling taking effect. Why? The water becomes murky after events like storm water from the Jones Falls spillway. Everything is washed into the harbor from pollutants to sediments, and it's stirred up. Sediments carry, as fertilizers, nutrients, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, which cause algae or dinoflagellate blooms. Now, you may not have heard of dinoflagellates, but they are a type of algae. They're microscopic marine organisms that can use energy from light and are carbon. This SEM picture is a living yo-yo. Carl, Carlodinium, Carlo for short. Carlo eats diatoms, those uh, broad shapes, and will excrete a toxin. So here's the situation. There's a runoff event, lots of nutrients into the water. Feeds the algae, the dinos, their population explodes, they bloom. They eat, they respire, they use up the oxygen, they die. Then Carlo excretes this toxin. No oxygen and high levels of toxin in the water leads to fish kills. The crabs are usually um, bottom dwellers. It's low oxygen, they can't survive in the bottom. So you see them swimming around, flitting around, or high in the pilings. They're swimming because they're suffocating. But as a microbiologist, I find the bubbles most fascinating. See, their communities in the sediments take complex carbons, break them down, byproducts feed another population, phatogens, which give off methane gas. You stir up sediment in a palm, release the gas, and you can light it up. And methanogens are a keel, which means ancient life forms are different than bacteria and eukaryotes. They have special vitamins, like the rumen of a cow. See, this one has a making fart collector on its back. <laughs> they thrive in extreme environments, what you say on a sea on a, expect to see on another planet, like perhaps Mars. So enough science. Let's just look at it again. See? Have a, sometimes you have a great clear view. See, these are blue crabs, so they are rust colored on the top. See, you notice the one that doesn't have any pincher claws? It's pretty much a tough world down there. But you see other ones, and they just hang around on the walls. But there are fish. I've seen them <laughs> twirling around quite often. These are still shots from my amateur video. They're unidentifying swimming objects. So you have to really adjust your eyes. But if I had an underwater camera like Adam Frederick from Sea Grant and placed it, this is what you would see. These are taken, these are wonderful pictures taken of the marine life. They're white perch, killifish, there's just a few species here, but stereoscope, you could see the mussels, hydra, anemone, among others on the surfaces. And I swear to you, this is not a tropical um, film. This is right down by the power station. So you see the Menhaden, they're silvery, flickering ghosts. The spots are really beautiful. All I've seen from above only gets better from below. Yeah, all of this is just living in Baltimore Harbor. So yes, there are challenges to be faced with the Chesapeake and the harbor. But I'm here today to remind people it's a natural resource in Baltimore's backyard. There is life and beauty, and it can get better. 
All you need to do is take a few minutes, stop and stare, look and linger, care about the Baltimore Harbor. So I'd like to thank the uh, faculty at IMET, Noel Mercy, and Adam for his amazing underwater pictures. So interested, check out the sites, and thanks everybody, and have a great night. Thank you.